The combination of large six foot plus muscle men and Nintendo's diminutive first portable games console, well it seems like an odd fit doesn't it? No amount of baby oil should be enough to squeeze big old units like the Ultimate Warrior, Ahmed Johnson or Yokozuna onto a five centimetre wide cartridge. Yet those wizards at LJN and Acclaim managed to do it five times in all using dark arcane magic that would confound both Papa Shango and The Undertaker. So let us look at the five titles released over seven years of the initial vanilla Game Boy's life. And although I won't be covering Game Boy Color titles this time around, maybe that's something I can do as a big push for SummerSlam. Maybe, I don't know. See how it goes. So let us get the ball rolling with WWF Superstars, a fairly unique title that borrows the Techno's arcade name and viewpoint, but mostly adopts a lot of the isometric NES game WWF WrestleMania Challenge's assets, such as its gameplay, animation and music. In fairness to WWF Superstars, it has a few more context-sensitive moves than its rare program Bigger Brother on the NES, though it lacks any kind of individuality between its small cast of grapplers and match types. Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage, Mr Perfect, Ted DiBiase and the Ultimate Warrior are all we get, and they all have identical move sets. For the most part, all you'll be able to do is punch, headbutt or body slam your rival with most of the other moves coming from when they're rising from the floor. These can be countered by doing a lot of roly polies, something you don't actually see a lot in wrestling. These maybe need to be incorporated more. I'm just offering this idea to you, Vince McMahon, more roly polies. Is that possible? Um, you are able to do a counterintuitive gorilla slam over the top using the select button on occasion, but it can only be used infrequently. WWF Superstars is a very limited title, uh, but as a short-term distraction from the horrors of bus travel, it's serviceable and it does feature the absolute creme de la creme of the late 80s era in terms of its roster. You also get some nice wrestler-specific promo quotes from the wrestlers and head cheese himself, Mr Vince McMahon. WWF Superstars had some mixed reviews. Zero gave the game the wrong name. Where, where's the other W? And awarded WWF Superstars a 90, saying it takes a while to get all the moves sussed, but from then on you'll be drop kicking like an expert. Nintendo Power, however, thought it was more Gilberg than Goldberg and gave it a miserable 58%, but stated that all the bone busting, knee dropping, and mat munching are ready to go. Doesn't sound too negative, does it, when they say it like that? Hmm. 1992's WWF Superstars 2 is a very different game. We've moved our inspiration away from the 8-bit NES to the 16-bit Super NES and Super WrestleMania, the first WWF effort on that system. It was released alongside the poorly received WWF Steel Cage Challenge itself, a decidedly low rent version of the already average title of Super WrestleMania. Animation and gameplay is taken wholesale from Super WrestleMania and the cast is increased by one wrestler with Hogan and Savage joined by newcomers Jake Roberts, Sid Justice, The Undertaker and curiously villainous Canadian goofball The Mountie. Options are increased so tag team and cage matches are allowed along with the belt challenge mode. Once again there's no signature or different moves for your wrestlers of choice. So your choice of wrestler is going to come down to whether you want a short moustache, a long moustache, no moustache, a full beard or a hat. Much like its older brother Super WrestleMania it's a button basher when grapples are engaged and they are massively fun to play along with particularly the way that LJN did it. Enforce, the only English language review I can find about it from the time, said it's basically a good game, but if you don't have a mate and a game link to use two player, think before you buy. Always a good idea to think before you buy anything. Moving on to the worst game of the video, WWF King of the Ring. It uses a similar game engine to the previous game, but what the hell has happened to the graphics and presentation? It is a visual 
disgrace as appalling as a naked pensioner smothered in pig feces running straight at you with a sexual intent in his eye. Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage have stuck around again and they're joined this time by Razor Ramon, Bret Hart, Lex Luger, Big Boy Yokozuna and a returning Mr Perfect. But they still haven't remembered that they have individual moves and signature manoeuvres as well. They do at least have a form of individuality in the form of three personal attributes, speed, strength and stamina, which allegedly have effects to how they play, but I couldn't see any difference. Added to the mixture of match types is the eponymous King of the Ring, named after a branching tournament where competitors would have to win multiple matches in one night in order to be crowned the monarch of the mat. It's not particularly well done, resulting in just a string of matches in a row, much like the already existing tournament mode. If an attempt at a story mode had been attempted in either the tournament mode or King of the Ring to differentiate the two, I could understand the point. It's just, there's nothing. This game mirrors the equally ugly NES version and both represent the absolute nadir of WWF games on either system. No easy feat when the original WrestleMania exists on the NES. That game was dog tooth terrible. GamePro reviewed King of the Ring in their October 1993 edition, stating that wrestling fans may enjoy taking their heroes on the road, but others will find the action as tiresome as a real WWF tournament. Ooh, bitchy, throwing shade there at Vince McMahon and his corporation. Up next then we've got WWF Raw, and the Super WrestleMania engine remains in place like an unloved fat fathers for justice protester in a Hulk Hogan costume chained to a wrestling stadium. Programmed by Real Time Associates and published by Acclaim, WWF Raw is based on the then new Raw is War weekly television show that invigorated the wrestling company's fortunes by having more competitive matches on free television. This game ended up being released on the Super Nintendo, the Mega Drive, the 32X and the Game Gear. The menu presentation takes a noticeable upgrade with the crappy list ditched for the multiple screens look of the show at the time. Well, overlaid over that crappy list anyway. Hulk Hogan and Savage have swanned off to competitors WCW by the end of 1994, so their fizzogs are finally gone out the door and King of the Ring entrance Luger, Hart, HBK, Yokozuna and Razor Ramon are joined by a returning Undertaker, Diesel and Doink the Clown. The profile presentations of the grapplers have never looked better, but um, that doesn't really follow in the main game. The Royal Rumble mode from the 16 and 32-bit versions are no longer present because the Game Boy might actually die if you tried that, probably. It would struggle showing six sprites at once, and the eight-person roster would make for an embarrassingly short Royal Rumble anyway, considering the main Royal Rumble has 30 members in it. That's before we even get to the limitations of the control, which would make targeting a particular wrestler very difficult, I would imagine, with just two buttons and that select one, should we need it. The Survivor Series mode does survive, and the format of 4 versus 4 elimination is pretty limited, as you might expect. In-game, and the graphics have never looked closer in terms of animation to the 16-bit WWF series, there's a real smoothness to how the wrestlers move. It is a major improvement over the eye-stabbing chaos of King of the Ring. With that said, the faces on the competitors are basic in the extreme. It was a wise decision to go for smaller sprites, though. Well done, you fellas. The gameplay also narrows the gap to Super WrestleMania, with it being possible to be locked into a lactic acid summoning grapple for multiple seconds each time as you waggle and button patch to gain advantage. And yes, for the fourth game in a row, every wrestler has exactly the same moves. Jeez Louise, make an effort, will ya? Game players think you should avoid WWF Raw, saying that you should stay the hell away from it and that a clothesline from The Undertaker hurts less. I personally don't think it's as bad as King of the Ring, though. That is definitely the bottom of the series so far. But it isn't as good as WWF Superstars 1 or 2. Moving on to the final WWF game of the original Game Boy. 
and we've got WWF Warzone released at the same time as its PlayStation and N64 counterparts. This just goes to show the longevity of the Game Boy seeing as the first few games were based on the NES and its final WWF game is two console generations later. Warzone on the 32-bit machines was one of the last WWF games Acclaim put out, a dull polygonal effort with a large roster, comprehensive creator wrestler options, a large amount of matches, stilted commentary and a very unuser-friendly moves interface. It has its fans, but it had all the approachability to me of a pair of Bastion Boogers underpants. The Game Boy 1 was nothing like its bigger brother, largely due to the massive technical disparity between the machines of the N64 and the Game Boy. Graphics were 2D, moves were simplified, contextual placement based affairs and sound was restricted to a jaunty 8-bit effort that would be not out of place on a Commodore 64 platformer. The roster is peak early Attitude Era, the time when WWF and WCW were getting huge ratings, competing with each other for superiority, and both shows were utterly compelling with huge casts of charismatic, skilled grapplers. Shawn Michaels, Kane, Ken Shamrock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Farouk, Goldust, Triple H, Mankind, Owen Hart, The British Bulldog, Ahmed Johnson, The Undertaker, and a pre-The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. Rocky Mavia, take up the impressively large roster slots. Well, impressive until you get to the game itself and they look barely different. Everyone looks almost identical near enough. This is not Owen Hart, no matter how hard you squint. Uh, they make a sort of half arsed effort with some of the heads sometimes, particularly the wrestlers who are bald or have got masks. But the bodies themselves are just either people in pants or singlets. It's so half arsed, I can't believe it. Cage matches are back along with tag team and a Mortal Kombat style tower format is employed for the championship mode as you try and suplex and slam your way to title glory. Moves are once again identical for each wrestler but finally right at the very last game we finally have wrestler specific finishing moves accessed by holding select and inputting a series of key prompts much like a Mortal Kombat fatality and you can use them with gay abandon too they're a bit tricky to do and uh, they won't be something that you'll probably be employing much as the game is extremely difficult and um, you will find it very hard to find time with which to input these complex commands when you're getting your ass handed to you by Ahmed Johnson or the British Bulldog Nintendo Power actually called them out on this, where they stated, unless you have reflexes of lightning, forget it, you're not going to have much fun. They gave it a 52% in their August 1998 issue. So all in all, not much excitement to be had for the 90s grapple fan on the go, which is reflected by the bad job that LJN and Acclaim generally did in the 1990s. It wasn't until THQ acquired the license and game development duties were given to Japanese developers like Aki and Yukes that we would finally see really good games based on the WWF license. And even then it's arguable that we got to see a decent WWF handheld game on any of the subsequent Nintendo handheld machines. But like I said earlier, that is a story for another day. The best WWF game? It's probably the very first one, WWF Superstars. If you really have to play a WWF game on the original Game Boy, WWF Superstars is your best bet. So what you gonna do when Jay is man child ends his video and says K thanks bye to you, brother.